A short beginner's guide on how to pray Salah. Starting your journey of Salat to connect to your Creator with simple step-by-step -step instructions. Written by The Sincere Seeker from The Sincere Seeker Collection. Narrated by Austin Van Fleet. What is the Salah prayer? Before we go over how to pray, we must go over the Salah prayer and why we perform it. The second pillar of Islam is the mandatory round of ritual prayers that every Muslim must perform five times daily. The Islamic method of prayer is a ritualized form of worship, which involves the recitation of verses from the Holy Quran and supplications to God all while standing, bowing, and prostrating. This mandatory act of worship is called Salah in Arabic and differs from merely praying or supplicating to God in an impulsive act, just speaking one's mind. Instead, the Salah prayers demand a formalized structure in which one prays a certain way at specific times, as demonstrated to us by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, drawing direct inspiration from Angel Gabriel, who learned from God himself. The Arabic word Salah, generally translated as prayer in English, is linguistically derived from the Arabic word meaning connection. This mode of prayer connects the servant with his creator. Salah is a Muslim's way of establishing direct contact with God the Almighty. Salah represents a Muslim's affirmation of servanthood and submission to his creator's will. In Salah, a Muslim acknowledges his weakness and neediness by seeking and begging for God's guidance, mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Salah, or this Islamic ritualized prayer, is one form of worship amongst many in this beautiful faith. However, Salah holds a special status in Islam because prayer builds a relationship between a servant and his creator. Salah is considered the central pole of the religion of Islam. Whoever demolishes or denies this practice in their life demolishes their religion. According to Islamic scholars, this is the only form of worship that, if neglected, would exclude the disobedient from the folds of Islam. When prayer time arrives, one is expected to discontinue their current activity and pray to connect with God, the All-Merciful, refreshing their faith for their benefit. Prayer helps remind one why they are here and for what purpose. Prayer helps direct a person's thoughts and actions away from sin, from that which is not beneficial. Prayers redirect a believer's thoughts to the remembrance of God. Why do we pray the Salah prayer? The Salah prayer is specifically a human form of worship. All other creatures of God, including animals and plants, submit without question to the Almighty in their unique way. Everything in the sky and earth declares Allah's perfection and worships Him in their way, a pattern we humans may not understand. All other creations of God are in continuous glorification, praise, and remembrance of God and worship in their own way. Just like the other members of creation worship Allah, man is expected to worship God. Do not you see that Allah glorify him whoever is in the heavens and the earth and the bird with wings outspread? Each one certainly knows its prayer and its glorification, and Allah is all knower of what they do. Quran, chapter 24, verse 41. Humanity was created for prayer and divine worship. God states in the Quran, And I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. Quran, chapter 51, verse 56. God commands humanity to establish and perfect their prayer by praying properly with concentration and the utmost humility. Every Muslim must work and practice to improve their prayer technique, which is a lifelong commitment. Muslims must engage in a lifelong effort to master this art of communication with their Creator. The ones that fall into a habitual routine of reciting their words without concentration and humility would miss the point of prayer, not benefiting from their prayer nearly as much as those who pray earnestly and with full concentration and mindfulness. Neglecting mandatory prayer is a grave sin in the Islamic faith. Allah, the Glorious, shares a dialogue in the Holy Quran in which the residents of Paradise ask the people of the Hellfire as to the reason for their condemnation. And the condemned respond, 
They will say, we were not of those who prayed, nor did we used to feed the poor, and we used to indulge in vain talk with the vain talkers. And we used to deny the day of recompense until there came to us the certainty. Quran, chapter 74, verses 43 to 47. The state of one's prayer will be the first thing to be asked of each on the great day of judgment. If one's prayers were in order, everything else would fall into place. If one's prayer were not in order, they would be doomed. The Messenger of Allah stated, The first of man's deeds, for which he will be called to account on the day of resurrection, will be Salat. If it is found to be perfect, he will be safe and successful. But if it is incomplete, he will be unfortunate and a loser. At Tirmidhi. Prayer should be directed only to God the Almighty, as He is the only one in complete control of everything, including man's destiny. He is all-powerful, all-wise, all-knowing, and all-hearing, and can fill anyone's needs and remove all of man's pain and miseries. The Islamic prayer ritual expresses submission to God, showing humility, devotion toward, and love of God. Praying to the Creator daily is the best way to build a personal connection with Him while seeking His guidance, blessings, and forgiveness. Muslims pray to God to gain spiritual strength and peace of mind and strengthen their faith's foundation. Muslims temporarily step out of their daily activities five times a day to connect with God, to stay mindful of Him in this world of stress, struggle, and distractions. Prayers remind Muslims that Allah controls all things so they can put their worldly concerns into perspective. The Islamic prayer method and mode act as a spiritual diet. Such as the body requires food and water throughout the day, our spirit needs to partake in the remembrance and worship of God to stay spiritually healthy. Is not the soul more valuable than the body? When someone does another person a favor or helps them, it's human nature to want to thank that individual for their aid. Since God has blessed humanity with a countless number of favors, including one's wealth, health, family, and all kinds of gifts, a Muslim prays numerous times to thank him throughout their day and night. The best way to demonstrate gratitude is through these five daily prayers. Who is required to pray Salah and who is not required? The five prayers are obligatory for anyone who is Muslim, reached puberty, and in his senses. The Salah prayer is not required for those mentally challenged, not in their sense. A woman that is menstruating or experiencing postnatal bleeding should not pray. What are the benefits of praying Salah? The Islamic ritual prayers come with many benefits, in this world and the next, for the ones that engage in them sincerely and mindfully, with concentration and humility. Amongst the benefits of praying is that the one that prays regularly and prays the way that they are supposed to be prayed has a promise from Allah that Allah will cause them to enter paradise. Amongst the benefits of praying is that the act of praying guards and protects a believer from sins and evil doings. Recite what has been revealed to you of the book and establish the prayer. Indeed, the prayer prevents from the immorality and evil deeds, and surely the remembrance of Allah is greatest, and Allah knows what you do. Quran, chapter 29, verse 45. When one becomes lackadaisical in their worship or neglects prayer altogether, they will experience the consequences of feeling distant from God, which may cause increased instances of sinning and evil doing. As they distance themselves from prayer and the remembrance of God, they become easier targets for Satan to reach out to and tempt them. The one that guards and faithfully practices their prayers would be mindful of everything else that matters. The one that neglects their prayers would be neglectful of what matters in this life. Amongst the many benefits of prayer is the transformative power that prayer has on a person. Prayer transforms a person's attitude, behavior, mentality, thoughts, and priorities, redirecting these elements to what matters in life. Prayer softens one's heart toward Allah and His creation. Muslims steadfast in their prayer are continually looking to help others and have a genuine concern for them, not just themselves. 
If one does not see their prayer's benefits and positive effects, one should question their sincerity, humility, and concentration in praying. God references the fate of past generations who did not take advantage of their prayers, wasting them. But there came after them successors who neglected prayer and pursued desires, so they are going to face destruction. Quran, chapter 19, verse 59. Salah, prayer, is also connected to the fate of our Ummah, Muslim community. Prayer solves the many problems our nation is facing. If our prayer is strong, everything else in our community will be healthy. Previous prophets and nations also performed Salah. The Islamic prayer is a ritual that has been unchanged for more than 1400 years and is repeated five times a day by hundreds of millions of people all around the globe. Earlier prophets and messengers also performed the Salah prayer, in which the act of prostration was involved. According to the Gospel of Matthew, Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, fell with his face to the ground and prayed. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, not as I will, but as you will. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. You are in need of praying to Allah. Allah does not need your prayers. It is important to note that God is transcendent, free of all needs and independent. He does not need human worship or reverence, as he gains nothing from it. Muslims do not pray or worship God for God's sake. Instead, they praise and worship God for their own sake. God made worship and the remembrance of him beneficial to humanity, both in this world and the next. And whoever strives only strives for the benefit of himself. Indeed, Allah is free from the needs of the worlds. Quran, chapter 29, verse 6. The benefits of praying to the Almighty are vast, and the blessings of prayer are beyond our imagination. Prayer motivates one to do good and strive for the best, so one can live a good life in this world and in the next world eternally. Indeed, I am Allah. There is no deity except me. So worship me and establish prayer for my remembrance. Quran, chapter 20, verse 14. The set times of Salat prayers and how many units each prayer consists. Much like the pillars of a building, where one cannot move them and needs to walk around them physically, a Muslim's life revolves around their five daily prayers, instead of casually trying to fit their prayers into their life. A Muslim's prayers are always their top priority. Everything else comes secondary. Muslims pray to Allah five times a day. These five prayers are obligatory. There are also optional prayers in which Muslims can pray throughout the day to strengthen their connection with Allah. Here is a list of the five mandatory prayers and how many units each consists of. We will talk about what movements and sayings consist in a unit of prayer in the section on how to pray Salat. The first is the Fajr prayer, prayed from dawn to the moment right before sunrise. The Fajr prayer has two units to be prayed. The second is the Zuhr prayer, prayed just after noon, midday when the sun passes the median point in the sky. The Zuhr prayer has four units to be prayed. The third is the Asr prayer, prayed during the afternoon, halfway between noon and sunset. The Asr prayer has four units to be prayed. The fourth is the Maghrib prayer, prayed directly after sunset. The Maghrib prayer has three units to be prayed. The fifth is the Isha prayer, prayed in late evening during the dark of the night, approximately an hour and a half after sunset. The Isha prayer has four units to be prayed. The five daily prayers set the rhythm of a Muslim's day. Prayers must be performed at their appointed due times unless a reasonable excuse exists to delay them. Prayers are prohibited from being postponed to where they overlap with the following prayer's time frame. Salah prayer has six preconditions that must be met. The Salah prayer has six preconditions that Muslims must follow for their prayers to be valid, unless one has a valid excuse. 
The first precondition is that one must be in a state of spiritual purity by cleansing themselves with gusel, washing the whole body, or wudu, ablution. If water is unavailable, one can perform tayammum instead, dry ablution using purified sand, stone, or mud. The second precondition is the timing of the prayer. One must pray during its set time. The third precondition is that a Muslim must cover his aura where his skin is not shown. One's cloth cannot be transparent or skin tight. For men, the aura is their body parts from their navel to their knees. Women's aura includes their whole body except their face and hands. The fourth precondition is to purify oneself from the impurity of one's physical body, clothes, and where one is praying. The fifth condition is that a Muslim must face the direction of Qabla, toward Mecca, when praying. The sixth precondition is that one must set an intention in their heart for the prayer they are about to perform. They must know which prayer they are praying. Optional Sunnah in Prayer some acts and sayings in prayers must be done, or your prayer will be invalid. However, there are also sunnahs in prayer. A sunnah is an act that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, performed or encouraged us to perform and is optional. And if enacted, you would get rewarded more by Allah. If not completed, there is no harm, and your prayer will remain valid. We pray the way Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stated, Pray as you have seen me praying. So, we should pray the way Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, instructed us to pray through narrations of hadith that were passed down to us. Hadith about prayer teaches us the pillars of prayer, the mandatory movements and sayings, the sunnah acts, and the acts and sayings that nullify the prayer. It's also important to note, while Muslims agree with each other in almost all aspects of religion, there are a few minor disagreements when it comes to the finer, minor details in our faith. There are differences of opinion among scholars based on their interpretation and evidence they extrapolate from the Sunnah. For example, some scholars or schools of thought might place their hands a little lower or higher than other scholars or schools of thought do in prayer. But, at the end of the day, as long as you follow reputable scholars or a school of thought, your prayer is valid. The Importance of Concentration and Mindfulness During Salat Prayers During prayer, Muslims are directed to disconnect themselves and clear their minds of worldly matters as they converse with God. They pray to a God who is all near, all loving, all hearing, all caring, and all powerful. Muslims are to concentrate on their words and humble themselves only to the Almighty. A Muslim affirms that God is the master and that they are the servant and slave of God who needs the Almighty's direction, help, and guidance to the straight path. The Islamic prayer is so sacred that it is prohibited to eat, drink, or converse as they pray. And establish prayer and give zakah and bow with those who bow in worship and obedience. Quran, chapter 2, verse 43. While not mandated, it is highly encouraged for one to awaken in the middle of the night to pray to God, as this is a common practice of righteous people. The Adhan, the Islamic call for prayer. In Muslim countries, prayer is publicly announced to the community not by bells, but by an Islamic chant or call of prayer known as Adan in Arabic. Before we start our prayer, we make our Adan and Ikama, the Islamic chant or call of prayer which is given to call people if there will be other people joining you. If one is praying alone, there is no need to perform Adan or Ikama, but it's Sunnah. The Direction Muslims Face When Praying Muslims all face the same direction when praying Salah. We pray with our face and body facing the direction of Mecca in present-day Saudi Arabia, where the Holy House of God, known as the Kaaba, is situated. Muslims from all over the globe face this direction, where the first house was built on earth to worship the one God. Of course, we do not worship the Kaaba. 
we only use the holy house as a direction to face while worshiping the one God as instructed by God himself. Prayers are only directed to God, our creator. Where can one pray? Praying individually and in congregation with others. Prayers can either be performed individually or in a congregation with others. One can pray individually or in congregation at home, work, mosque, or anywhere indoors or outdoors except in bathrooms and graveyards. You are also allowed to pray outdoors, as the whole earth has been permissible as a place of worship, including sand, grass, etc., unless there are signs of impurity. Males are highly recommended to pray in congregation with others in one of God's houses called mosques. Friday prayers are required to be prayed in the mosque for all males and not required for females. While not required, many Muslims use a prayer mat to pray on. Before we pray, we must cleanse ourselves by performing wudu ablution. Before the prayer begins, a Muslim is required to perform ablution, wudu in Arabic, which is the act of cleaning and purifying oneself from physical bodily fluids, such as blood, urine, or any impurity, with water. A Muslim must be clean and free of impurities in his body, clothing, and the area where prayer will be performed. One drop of waste matter present anywhere would void one's prayer. Wudu was the first ritual legislated in Islam, legislated right after the second revelation. Wudu is half of our faith. The passing of urine, stool, windbreaks, eating camel meat, losing consciousness, or falling asleep while lying down breaks one's wudu. Gusel, a full body bath, is required after sexual intercourse or when sperm is discharged. If one does not break his wudu and the following prayer comes in, they can pray with the same wudu ablution performed prior. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stated that were it not difficult for my nation, I would have commanded my nation to perform wudu ablution every time they stood up to pray. This is to show us the importance of and encourage us to perform a lot of wudu in our lives. On Judgment Day, those who performed a perfect wudu will be identifiable by the light shining from the areas they washed in wudu. Every time we make wudu, sins fall with the drops of water from our skin. So the repetition of wudu cleanses our sins, and we should get into the habit of performing ablution regularly. O oh, believers, when you rise up for prayer, wash your faces and your hands up to the elbows. Wipe your heads and wash your feet to the ankles. And if you are in a state of full impurity, then take a full bath. But if you are ill, on a journey, or have relieved yourselves, or have been intimate with your wives and cannot find water, then purify yourselves with clean earth by wiping your faces and hands. It is not Allah's will to burden you, but to purify you and complete his favor upon you, so perhaps you will be grateful. Quran, chapter 5, verse 6. Before we learn how to pray, we must learn how to perform wudu, ablution. Here are step-by-step -step instructions. Step one is the same for all good acts we do for Allah. You intend in your heart that you are performing this good deed for Allah alone. And then you say, Bismillah, which means in the name of Allah. You start everything in the name of Allah. Turn your faucet in a manner where it doesn't waste a lot of water. You start by washing your hands up to your wrists three times. You start with your right hand and then your left three times. It's sunnah to wash between your fingers. Then you wash your mouth and nose with one hand full of water three times. You use your right hand to insert water into your nose and your left hand to remove the water from your nose. Then you wash your face from your hairline to your chin and from one ear to the other without washing your ear yet. If someone has a beard, they can run their wet fingers between their beards. This is done three times. Then you wash your arms from the beginning of your hand into your elbow, starting with your right arm and then your left three times. You roll the water down from your hands into your elbows and then rub. Then you do the same for your left arm three times. Let the water flow down your hands as sins will fall with the water. 
After that comes the wiping of your head with your wet hands, from the top of your hairline to the bottom of your hairline, back and forth only once. Then, wash your ears by inserting your damp finger into your ears, cleaning the inside and outside of your ears once. Then comes the washing of your feet, starting with your right foot, from your toes to your ankles three times. Remember to wash between your toes and the bottom of your heels too. Then wash your left foot three times. When complete, it's a sunnah to say, I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone, who has no partner, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. Tayammum, dry ablution when no water is available or you cannot use water. Tayammum, dry ablution, is a gift Allah has given us to make things easier for us. If you are sick or wounded and cannot use water, or traveling and do not have water, you may perform tayammum instead of wudu or ghusl. Tayammum is a symbolic ritual, and all you must do is strike both your hands lightly into any clean earth surface, for instance, sand or stone, Blow your hands to blow the dust off, and then wipe your face and hands. How do we pray Salah prayer? Now that you completed your wudu ablution, let's go over how each unit of prayer is performed. Before you connect with Allah, you must start by setting an intention in your heart for the prayer you are about to perform. There is no need to verbalize your intention. Now, you're ready to start the prayer. You start by raising both your hands to shoulder or ear height. Do not place your hands together. Instead, keep them shoulder-width apart and your feet shoulder-width apart. And you say, Allah Akbar, which translates to Allah is greater. In almost every movement of the prayer, you will say Allah Akbar, which will constantly remind you Allah is greater than what you were doing, saying, thinking, and is greater than everything. Keep your eyes looking down at the ground in front of you where your head would be placed when you prostrate. It's essential to stay concentrated on your prayer and not look around, which would disturb you from your prayers. You should not close your eyes during prayers. Then you place your right hand over your left hand on your lower chest area. Placing your hands a little higher or a little lower is fine. You can have your right hand hold your left wrist, left hand, or left forearm. Then, you recite the opening dua supplication known in Arabic as dua al-istifta. This is a sunnah to recite, so it's optional, and there is no harm in skipping it. You say, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik wa tabarak asmuk wa ta'ala jadduk Glory and praise be to you, O Allah. Blessed be your name and exalted be your majesty. There is none worthy of worship except you. There are other optional dua supplications you can recite instead. Then we seek refuge in Allah from the cursed shaitan, and then we recite the first chapter of the Holy Quran called Surat Al-Fatiha, the opener. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. I seek refuge in Allah from Satan the accursed. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, most merciful. الحمد لله رب العالمين. All praise is for Allah, Lord of all worlds. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim The most compassionate, most merciful Maliki Yawmiddin Master of the Day of Judgment Iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'een You alone we worship and you alone we seek for help Ihdina al-Sirat al-Mustaqeem Guide us along the straight path Surat al-Ladheena an'amta alayhim 
وغير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. The path of those who you have blessed, not those who you are displeased with, or those that went astray. Amin. Then it is sunnah to read a short chapter or a few verses of your choice from the Holy Quran. However, suppose you are praying behind an imam and he recites loudly. In that case, you can either recite chapter al fatiha after the imam completes the chapter of al fatiha or you cannot recite it. If you are praying behind an imam and he recites loudly, there is no need to recite a small chapter or a few verses of the Quran. Then you raise your hands to your shoulder or ear height and say, Allah Akbar, God is greater. Then you go to a bowing position with both your hands on your knees and fingers spread a little with your back and head lined up straight, with your elbows raised and tucked in and not outward, and say at least one time silently, three are recommended. Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. Glory to my Lord the Exalted. Then rise while raising both your hands to your shoulder or ear height once and say, Allah hears whoever praises him. O oh, our Lord, all praise is to you. Then you slightly pause for a second with either your right hand over your left hand a little under your chest or with both hands relaxed straight on your sides. Then you fall into prostration while saying Allah Akbar. God is greater, falling with either your hands or knees first. Place your forehead touching the ground. The seven body parts that should touch the ground include your face with a nose, two hands, two knees, and two feet, all pointing forward. Do not place your elbows on the floor. Keep them pointed up, inward, and do not rest your stomach on your thighs. Keep your belly away from sitting on your stomach to the best of your ability. While in prostration, called sujud in Arabic, you say silently at least once, three is recommended. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Glory be to my Lord, the Most High. There are optional dua supplications one can say after this. You can also make dua supplication for whatever you want. For example, you can ask Allah for guidance, forgiveness, health, wealth, etc. You can make dua supplication here in any language, as Allah understands all languages. You are closest to Allah when you are in this sujood prostration, so make a lot of dua supplication if you please. Then you raise upright from your prostration position while saying, Allah Akbar, God is greater, with your knees bent and palms placed on your thighs near your knees. Your right foot should be straight and you sit on your left foot, keeping it horizontal to the ground while saying twice silently, Lord, forgive me. There are other dua supplications one can say instead. Then prostrate to the ground again while saying, Allah Akbar, God is greater. And you repeat the same words on the prostration page. Subhana Rabbi al Glory be to my Lord, the Most High. After that, you have completed one unit of prayer called Raka in Arabic. You would then get up while saying Allah Akbar, God is greater, and pray the second unit of prayer, repeating all the same steps above starting from reading the first chapter of the Holy Quran called Surat al fatiha the opener. After finishing two units of prayer, one should sit on his knees with his hands on his thighs near his knees. You sit on your left foot, keeping it horizontal, and your right foot straight up vertically with your toes pointing toward the Qibla, Mecca. With your right hand, you point your index finger toward the Qibla, toward Mecca, the direction we pray, making a circle with your thumb and middle finger. Or you can make a fist with all your fingers except for your index finger, which should be pointed. You can keep your pointed finger still or slowly move it up and down and look down at your finger 
and down in the area where your head was on. Then recite silently what is known as the Tashahud. As-salamu alayka ayyuha al-nabiy wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi s-salihin Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh All compliments, prayers and beautiful expressions are for God Peace be upon you, O Prophet, and Allah's mercy and blessings are on you. And peace be upon us and on the good, pious worshippers of Allah. I bear that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that Muhammad is his slave and apostle. Then you recite what is known as the Dua al Ibrahimiya, the prayer of Ibrahim. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد O oh Allah, send your grace, honor, and mercy upon Muhammad and upon the family of Muhammad as you sent your grace, honor, and mercy upon Ibrahim. You are indeed worthy of praise, full of glory, O oh Allah, send your blessings upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, as you sent your blessings upon Ibrahim. You are indeed worthy of praise, full of glory. Note, there are a few different variations of these dua supplications. They are all valid to recite. Then, you can recite an optional dua supplication seeking refuge in Allah from four things. The punishment of hellfire, the punishment of the grave, the trial of life and death, and the evil of the trial of the Antichrist. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab jahannam wa min adhab al-qabr wa min fitnati al-mahya wal-mamat wa min sharr fitnati al-masih al-dajjal O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you against the punishment of hellfire, the punishment of the grave, the trial of life and death, and the evil of the trial of the Antichrist. Then you can recite any dua supplications of your choice and ask Allah for anything you want. Then you would conclude your prayer by turning your head to the right first while saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace and the mercy of Allah be upon you. Then you turn your head to the left and repeat the same words. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace and the mercy of Allah be upon you. You have now completed a two unit prayer. May your prayers connect you closer to Allah and reward you in this world and the hereafter. But note, some prayers are more than two units, so please read on to learn how to proceed with more than two units. Prayers that are more than two unit prayers. What we just performed was a two unit prayer. The five daily prayers you are required to pray have different numbers of units needed to pray. Only the Fajr prayer, from dawn to the moment right before sunrise, is a two unit prayer. As for Zur, Asr, and Isha, these prayers are four-unit prayers, and Maghrib is a three-unit prayer. For these four prayers, after completing the second prostration of your second unit of prayer, you place both your hands on your knees, with your back and head lined up straight. It's a sunnah to raise your right foot vertically, with your toes pointing to the direction of the Qibla, Mecca. Your left leg will be underneath your thigh, with the weight of your body on your left thigh and buttock 
so you'll be sitting on the left side of your body. And you say the same first half of the tashahud we spoke about earlier. All compliments, prayers, and beautiful expressions are for God. Peace be upon you, O Prophet, and Allah's mercy and blessings are on you. And peace be on us and on the good, pious worshippers of Allah. I bear that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that Muhammad is his slave and apostle. Then you would get up while saying Allah Akbar, God is greater, and perform your third unit of prayer. Reciting the Holy Quran in your prayers, out loud or silently. During both units of prayer of Fajr and the first two units of Maghrib and Isha, you would recite the opening chapter of the Holy Quran and the verses of your choice after it out loud instead of silently. As for the rest of the units of Maghrib, one unit, and the Isha prayer, two units, you read silently to yourself. For Zuhr and Asr prayers, all four units are read silently. May Allah accept your prayers and reward you abundantly, and may your prayers be a means that connects you closer to your Creator. This has been a short beginner's guide on how to pray Salah, starting your journey of Salat to connect to your Creator with simple step-by-step -step instructions. Written by The Sincere Seeker, from the Sincere Seeker Collection. Narrated by Austin Van Fleet. Copyright 2022, The Sincere Seeker. All rights reserved. Thank you for listening. <laughs>